there loves! This is Jean Castillo! Welcome back to my channel! And also, welcome back to me! I wasn't able to upload for two weeks because I was so busy preparing for the opening of classes. Yesterday, I finished everything and now I am gonna tackle the vlog. Today is Sunday and hopefully, I would be able to release this content on Tuesday early morning. I think this is one of the most anticipated videos in my channel and it gives so much responsibility on my shoulder. I actually feel a bit pressured but I look at it as a motivation to give the best that I could in my contents. I am a research enthusiast, not yet a research expert. The information that I am gonna share to you today are based on my readings and experiences in research writing, teaching, coaching, and trainings which gave me the opportunity to meet high caliber researchers not only in the division of Northern Samar but in the entire Eastern Visayas region. I owe them a lot and I hope that I would be able to help and inspire others like what they did to me. On that note, let's dive into our lesson for today. Characteristics of Quantitative Research First, let's revisit your prior knowledge on inquiry and research. Inquiry and research both require investigation, data collection, and answer to questions. However, there is a demarcation line between these two. They may have the same goal, to probe or examine something, Yet, research includes more complex acts of investigation than inquiry because it follows a specific procedure of discovering truths or meanings. Goodwin, 2014, and Lapan, 2012. Simply put, inquiry is knowing what are the things or the stuff the students did to while their time away during the quarantine, like what hobbies they discovered, or what are the talents or skills that they were able to practice again. On the other hand, research is investigating or uncovering the psychological effects of these hobbies or talents as a coping mechanism during the pandemic. Frequently asked question number one, what makes quantitative research different from qualitative research? The widely used answer to this question is that quantitative research uses numbers in stating generalizations while qualitative research employs words, text, narrative, and even images to explore a phenomenon. In quantitative research, we utilize statistical treatment to quantify, as the name implies, or measure variables and identify the significant relationship or difference between these variables. An analogy was shared by my Methods of Research professor, Sir Tito Kabile. Sir, if you happen to watch this video, greetings to you, sir. I hope that you and your family are well and safe. So going back, Sir Tito presented an analogy as regards the difference between qualitative research and quantitative research. And I have been sharing this to my students for several years now. He said that qualitative research is like going to the market and having in mind that you need to cook pinakbet. You go to the market but you don't have a list of the ingredients you need to buy and you just pick whatever you see. On the other hand, quantitative research is like going to the market knowing that you want to cook pinakbet and having a list of the ingredients you need to buy. And whatever are on the list, those are the things or the ingredients that you will purchase. No more, no less. I hope this analogy helps you understand better. Now, here are the characteristics of quantitative research as cited by Carrie Naval and Prieto 2017. Methods or procedures of data gathering include items like age, gender, educational status, among others, that call for measurable characteristics of the population. These variables, age, gender, and educational status, make up the profile of the respondents. Just a quick review, 
The persons involved in a quantitative study are called respondents. In qualitative, they are referred to as participants. To my students last academic year who are watching, you know this already, right? But to the other viewers who are new to this channel, bear this in mind so you wouldn't be confused. Going back to the profile of the respondents, there is another frequently asked question related to this. Ma'am, what sub-variables shall we include in the study? Well, that depends on your research problem. You have to consider factors which you deem are significant in the conduct of your research. Aside from age, gender, or sex, and educational status, you can also look into the family monthly income, educational attainment and occupation of parents, residence, learning materials available at home, such like standardized instruments guide data collection, thus ensuring the accuracy, reliability, and validity of data. Reliability indicates the accuracy or precision of the measuring instrument, Norland 1990. On one hand, validity is traditionally defined as degree to which a test measures what it claims or purports to be measuring. Brown, 1996. How will you know that your research instrument is standardized? First, if the instrument you will use is a test, such as psychological test, communication skills test, mathematical ability test, among others. Second, the research instrument has been used in various researches for multiple times already. Third, a self-made instrument checked, reviewed, and validated by internal and external validators or validated through letting a group with the same characteristics of your chosen population answer the instrument you crafted and analyzing each item or statement whether they are to be retained, revised, or discarded. Can you edit or revise the questions in a standardized instrument? Yes, you can. You can modify the instrument to suit the context of your study or the level of the respondents. You can even translate the questions to mother tongue or Filipino for better understanding. Why is it important to use standardized research instruments? Standardized instruments have been reviewed and employed in data collection repeatedly. Therefore, the reliability and validity of data will be guaranteed. Hello from my editing cave. Before you use the standardized instrument, it's better if you ask for the permission of the rightful owner first. You can message him through Gmail or try other means. Figures, tables, or graphs showcase summarized data collected in order to show trends, relationships, or differences among variables. The charts and tables allow you to see the evidence collected. This is somewhat self-explanatory, but I want to emphasize that researchers are not only bounded to use tables. You can try making bar graph, pie graph, or line graph. You can even use illustrations or drawings in presenting the results. A large population yields more reliable data, but principles of random sampling must be strictly followed to prevent researchers' bias. In identifying the respondents of your study, you have to get the sample size of the population first. Population means the total number of the respondents of your study, while sample is a selection of respondents for your research work, which represents the total population. For example, you have chosen the senior high school students in Allen National High School as your respondents. Let's say there are 1,000 senior high school students, and after following the Slovens formula, you have determined that you need a sample size of 500 students. Then, you need to choose the appropriate sampling technique to identify who your respondents are. But take note, kids! Avoid prejudices. Avoid being biased. Bawal piliin si Crush as your respondent. And then, para-paraan ka para magkachat kayo magdamag. Tapos, iiwan ka lang pala sa ere. That's a big no-no. Quantitative methods can be repeated to verify findings in another setting. Like what I mentioned earlier, the research instrument to be used can be tested to another group having the same characteristics as the chosen respondents. 
This way, we can secure the accuracy and soundness of the research methods. Also, you can reconduct the data gathering for several times to check if the methodology would yield consistent and accurate response after repeated measurements. Moving on to the strengths of quantitative research. First, quantitative research design is the most reliable and valid way of concluding results giving way to a new hypothesis or to disproving it. Second, because of a bigger number of the sample of a population, the results or generalizations are more reliable and valid. Third, quantitative experiments filter out external factors if properly designed and so the results gained can be seen as real and unbiased. Fourth, gathering data is faster and easier. Fifth, statistical software can be used which makes data analysis faster to be done. For the weaknesses, first, quantitative research lacks the necessary data to explore a problem in depth. Second, it does not provide comprehensive explanation of human experiences. Third, some information cannot be described by numerical data such as feelings and beliefs. Fourth, the research design is rigid and not very flexible. Fifth, the respondents are limited to choose only from the given responses. Unlike with qualitative research, the researchers can ask follow-up questions whenever necessary. And a large sample size makes data collection more costly. That concludes today's lesson. I hope you learned a thing or two from me. If I was able to help you study the characteristics of quantitative research, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell to keep you posted of my uploads. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, bye for now!